Hello everybody, welcome to my channel That Model Railway Guy and in today's video I'm going to do a quick little tutorial and walk you through how I made the fences on my small shunting layout Pickwick Yard. If you haven't already, do check out the video where I showed you how I put the layout together but today we're just going to be focusing on the fences and you'll be pleased to know that this technique is fairly simple and fairly cheap too. So the main things we'll need to build our fence are some sandwich bag ties and then also some plastic hard strips. These are Plastruct 0.8mm by 1.5mm strips and I found that they're absolutely perfect. The great thing about both these and the sandwich bag ties is that they're really cheap and also you get plenty of them in a pack so you can make up loads of fences if you want. Now we're not going to tear the individual ties off, but instead what we're going to do is keep them joined together and these will form our fence panels. But obviously this fence is far too tall, so as you can see here I'm just marking with a pencil how high I want my fence to be. I actually found that the height of this ruler seemed pretty much perfect, although I don't know what scale height it would actually be. It seemed to look right to me and so that's what I went with. And then obviously we just cut down that line that we made with a pair of scissors, so we end up with a strip of ties all joined together at the right height. You could cut it with a knife, but I actually found it a lot easier to do it with scissors for some reason. Either way, you just need to be careful because there is that small piece of metal running through each of the ties which you have to cut through. Now I want a fence that is slightly longer than this strip, so all we need to do is mark out the height on another sheet and then cut that too. And as you can see we now have two strips which can be joined together. I'm using PVA glue to join them together because I had plenty of it lying around. I did originally try super glue, thinking that would be stronger, but funnily enough it didn't stick together at all. No matter though, the PVA works absolutely fine and we now have one big long section of fence. Sticking with PVA, if you'll pardon the pun, we're going to put plenty of it all over the surface of the fence and then stick down our plastic card strips. Make sure you press it down nice and firmly so that it sticks along the whole length and there's no gaps. We'll do the same for the second plastic card strip, putting the glue down first and then adjusting the height to make sure it all looks okay. To be honest, I was being very liberal with the glue here, so you might not need to use as much as I did, but as you can see, I then used the brush to wipe the excess glue into the edges, which will make it just that little bit more secure. And then I just weighed everything down with a few spare paint pots and left it to dry. Coming back, now that it's dry, you can see those strips make the whole thing a lot less fragile and much more rigid, but not so much that you can't easily bend it still. As you may have noticed, I've also cut two more bits of plastic card strip and I've added those onto the right hand side so they run for the full length of the fence. On to painting now, and to be honest I was just using whatever paint I had left over from other projects, so any old brown will probably do. If you're really interested though, the exact brown I'm using is Humbrol 186, as you can see here, and it seems to look pretty good. But as I say, I was only using this because I just happened to have it. Painting is probably the most time consuming part of this tutorial, simply because there are so many gaps that you might miss, so you really have to work the brush into all of the corners and under all the edges of the strips, otherwise you'll just have random flecks of white shining through. I suppose if you had an airbrush you could do it with that or even just a simple can of spray paint would do. Uh, it would probably be much quicker but I'm just doing it with whatever I've got around me so an old tin of humble paint, a brush and plenty of time will get you similar results. Once the brown was dry, I then took some grey, this is Humbrol Matte 64, and then dry brushed it over the entire fence. It doesn't look like it's making much of a difference here in the wide shot, but you'll see on the close-up that it's actually having quite an effect on bringing some variation into the fence. I'm assuming that most of you probably already know what dry brushing is, but just in case you don't, essentially all it is is putting a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of paint on your brush, wiping most of it off onto an old bit of newspaper or something similar, and then the really small amount that is left, you lightly brush over the fence just to give it a bit of texture. The idea here isn't to give it a full coverage at all, it's just supposed to be random flecks that represent dirt that's built up over the years so it doesn't look too uniform. The final step is completely optional, but I like to add a little bit of flock to the bottom edge of the fence just to disguise the join a little bit, as sometimes it's not completely straight. Once again, using the PVA quite liberally, just spread it along the bottom underneath the first plastic card strip. Then what we'll do is we'll take some flock, this is just some random stuff from Woodland Scenics, I think that I've been waiting for an opportunity to use up. Uh, we'll take quite a large clump of this and press it into the glue, and make sure you press it in really well. Now as you can see I'm taking a huge amount here, much more than I actually want on the fence but that's okay because only a small amount of it is actually going to stick and the rest will fall off quite easily. You'll actually find that most of it wants to stick to your fingers anyway and not the fence. And yeah, then you just turn over the fence for a second and knock off all the excess flock that hasn't stuck to the glue. Don't forget that the excess doesn't go to waste, you can gather it up into a little pile and keep using it over and over again. And after that, it's simply just a case of repeating the process. I'd say it's best to do a little at a time and slowly work your way along the fence. So add the glue, then press in a small amount of the flock before knocking off any of the excess. Remember, you don't want it to look too full, so it can be a bit random and you can have patches where there aren't any flock. We're not going for a full bush here, it's just a few weeds or moss that's gathered around the bottom. 
And there you go, that's our fence completely finished. And I think it looks rather good for something that's so simple to make and hasn't cost too much either. Obviously the paint and the flock will add a little bit to the price, but even then it still doesn't come to much. And you'll have plenty of materials to make quite a few lengths of fence as well. As for attaching it to the layout, on Pickwick Yard this fence sits right at the back to hide the join between the back scene and the baseboard, so in my case it just leans quite happily against the back scene. I suppose if that doesn't work for you though, you could quite easily cut down some cocktail sticks, glue those to the back of the fence and then drill some holes in the baseboard for them to sit into. And so that's going to be it for this time guys. If you want to see some more trains running on Pickwick Yard, then make sure you check out the other videos on my channel where there's plenty of that to go around. In the meantime though, I do hope you enjoyed this little tutorial, and maybe it's given you some ideas about some things you can do on your own layout. For now though, please do subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to leave a comment if you've got any ideas for other videos you'd like to see me make. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!